Now that we've talked about RoboFlow from that 10,000 foot view, let's actually dive in and make sure that we go through each of these five steps together. The first step is for us to upload our images. Now, before doing that, you're going to have to sign in to your RoboFlow account, which you can do by going to roboflow.com. If you haven't yet created an account, pause the video here and make sure that you go to the site and create your own account by clicking that Try It Now button in the top right-hand corner. Once you're done with that and you're logged in, you should be able to see something that looks like this, our RoboFlow dashboard. In order to upload your own images, you're going to click Create New Project. You can download a sample project if you want to walk through a tutorial. I'm gonna go ahead and upload my own data here. The specific type of data set that I'm going to work with is an American Sign Language Letter data set. So under project name, I'm gonna put ASL underscore letters. It's an object detection problem, so I'm just gonna keep that as is. And then for my annotation group here, these are the type of subjects that you're detecting. So you'll want to be able to fill in the blank. I labeled all the blank in these images. In this case, we are labeling, or rather I am labeling letters, American Sign Language letters, for example. So for annotation group, I'm going to put in here letters and click create project. Now there's gonna be some prompts that I'm going to click through here. But at this point, RoboFlow is going to prompt you to drag and drop in images and annotations. That's one of the cool things about RoboFlow. Not only can you upload images that may or may not have annotations, but you're going to be able to upload the annotation files along with the images if you have them. So for example, if you're working with data that has already been labeled and you've got a Coco JSON annotation file or a Pascal VOC XML annotation file or one of the dozens of other formats that we support, you're going to be able to drag your images as well as your annotation file in at the same time. One thing that I haven't called out here is you can also upload video directly to RoboFlow as well, the same way you would upload images and the annotation files. I'm going to click select folder here. And I'm going to, in my computer, go to the David Lee ASL letters folder. David Lee is the individual who originally created this data set I'm going to use. And then I've got all of these images. You can see the .jpg files that are grayed out. All of those files are here. There's also a coco.json file. That is the annotation file here that stores all of the bounding box information that I need. I'm gonna go ahead and upload this information. What you'll notice is that we're now uploading these images directly to RoboFlow. And as we upload these images directly to RoboFlow, one of the things that you'll notice is that in many of these images, we're seeing bounding boxes being put around those images. So that's something that we're handling upon upload, which is pretty cool. You'll notice here that we've got some images that are annotated and some that aren't annotated. This is going to, this counter up here is going to make it very easy for us in the next stage for us to annotate our videos. Now, let's say that you've got images that contain no annotations whatsoever. There's no bounding boxes that are already created. That's totally okay. You can upload all of your images without annotation. In the next video, what we're going to get into is I'm going to show you how to annotate these images. So don't fret if you have many images that aren't annotated. As these upload, once they're done, you'll see this button in the top corner that says finish uploading. You want to make sure that you click this finish uploading button. Because once we do that, then what we're going to be able to do is go ahead and annotate anything that isn't already annotated. When uploading, we also split images into training, validation, and testing data sets. Generally speaking, if you don't know what this is, or if you know what this is, but don't have a good reason to, I would stick with the default of putting 20, or sorry, 70% of your data into the training, 20 into the validation, and 10 into the testing. 
However, if for some reason you've got advanced knowledge and you know that you want to put all of your images in the validation or the training data, the validation set, or the testing set, you will be able to do that if you would like to. You can also change these numbers here if you want by dragging these sliders if you want to come up with something that's a little bit more bespoke to your use case. We'll click continue here and all of these files are now being uploaded. With that, I'll pause here and we will, in our next video, talk about how to annotate those unannotated images.